$400 and all. But I think they, uh, only thing saved me this year is they uh, can't cut the stuff off till April, I believe. They still got that ordinance that they had to put in and all. But, um, but we'll have others, but there's other speakers. Like I say, most Sundays, uh, C. Freeman L. will be speaking here. And um, so, uh, but I'll at least do at least two weekends out of the month. I mean, two days out of the, you know, a weekend out of the month. It would be two days and stuff. I usually do two days on in other cities and stuff. Um, so we'll be dealing with some of that. Uh, um, we're also talking about uh, the elixir, which is a heal, a heal all. Um, it was given to me by two goddesses, two sisters, two goddesses, one named Shayola and one named Otitia. So they say that this basically, if you call on them and, and, and drink this here, pretty, they pretty much get up in there and, and cure everything. One of the brothers was asking, you know, about how alcohol being bad, but they don't understand this is a metaphysical thing. What's happening here is the alcohol is just a gateway for the spirits to enter. And I talked about um, how in Rudolf Steiner's book, Universe, Earth, and Man, and we all know that surgery was the last resort in ancient Kemet in Africa, and in so many words, basically, your temple was a hospital, but they would just take you and lay you on the table in the temple and then invoke the gods, and the gods would really come in and operate. It was really easy. Uh, about like the movie Stargate, when you saw um, they had that thing that they laid down in there. It's, 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 that is the science, you know, a sarcophagus-type thing, and they would actually operate. So this is the science on this. this these two entities called Sheola and Otich, she, excuse me, Sheola and Teacha. There's the other one that's called Otincha, but she kind of burns down things. So <laughs> she said, just don't call my name now unless you want something burned down and stuff. So, and she, her name is Otincha. This, and um, these are it's about four or five of them. There's uh, Sheola, which is a healing spirit. Uh, Teacha is the second one. The two sisters, Sheola and Teacha. Uh, Sheola, Teacha. Those are two healing spirits. Sheola is more of a mother type of spirit, and T.H. is still a, a nurturing spirit and all, but it's like two nurses. And then you have uh, uh, Otincha, which is brain fire. She said this, she burned down stuff. I thought it was a male, but it ended up being a female. Otincha. And then there's also uh, Shumala, which is a warrior. And Omagumu, which is over thousands of legions of warrior demon spirits. Um, and then there's also, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, Omagumu, Shumala, which is, Shumala is a warrior, Omagumu is a, a general over these whole, um, these, this, this, these whole legions of spirits, and, um, and then, you, like I say, Teacha and Sheola is both, are both um, healing spirits, and then you got old teacher that burns down things. And then there's one called a, a Kakumbo, and basically right now, since he, came about a, about a month after the other four came. There's one called uh, Lokeo. Lokeo is another spirit. Um, I don't know what she does right now and all, but I know she came, up, came about with Kakumbo. And basically Kakumbo, the only thing he has been doing is just been going around the earth screwing women and tightening them all up, which is paramount to what I'm going to be dealing with today and also with this thing here. So basically he's a Shiva type energy. And basically, he just lays pipe, you know, <laughs> you know, lays pipe, you know. I told a whole controller. But, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> and basically, that's what he's been doing since he, since he was invoked, since he came about. But he's a, he is, Kakumbo is a, Kakumbo is a Congo form of Heiru. Heiru Osiris combined. That's what, you, that's what the whole penis thing is about. Um, uh, the whole penis thing is about. So he's a, a Congo form of that. And then you have the Congo rites, which is your uh, 11 other deities, headed by Zarabanda. Uh, Zarabanda is like, he's like a leg bar, but he's the gateway to the other dimension, and he's the gateway for the other 11 spirits. Um, we'll report we'll to them in a few minutes. Um, these other 11 spirits, which, which consist of El Cristo Negro, which is a... Uh, the, a crucified black Christ, um, El Cristo Rey, which is the Lord of the world, is a composite of the same, Madre de Agua, which is mother of the water, Madre de la Luna, which is mother of the moon, um, Francisco de Trichy Reyes, I think he uh, 
the, the, the several ones deal with several things, uh, several things of money or whatever. Um, um, and then the cent, uh, there's, uh, I, I will, I, as a matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll go over the characteristics of them in a few minutes, um, of what they all do. These are the spirits for the new millennium, uh, for the m new millennium that will replace, oh, well, there's only four one renegade spirits at this particular time. It's like a family fight going on. Uh, they got a little pissed and stuff because they want to rule in the new millennium, but these particular ones have been dormant for eons, and then the other ones have been ruling for eons, so it's a little family fight. It's some nigger shit, but it's basically that's how it goes. Um, it's in the mythology today that, you know, um, it's that way, you know, especially if you read it in the Yoruba mythology. The thing about it here is, is although you have your, your Yoruba or your Santeria pantheon, the women of the Santeria pantheon, old, uh, 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 Oshun, Yemenya, Oya, Richa Oku, and even Ola Kuhn is also a woman uh, uh, in, the, in the particular uh, uh, Europe of Pantheon. Those women, and we need to get this thing straight, those women, anytime you have a female goddess, there will never be a replacement of a female goddess. They will always rule. So what happened was, is that, and see, basically what you have to do is you have to become a scholar on it to try to understand, and, and I was talking about this yesterday. Just about every system is in fragments. Uh, in, in ancient Kemet, West African systems, all systems are all ancient systems that explain this particular spiritual apparatus. All of them are in climate, uh, uh, excuse me, all, all in a form of fragment. So you're not going to get a complete system, despite what a bottle aisle, or anybody ever tell you, there's no complete system left on the planet. So what has to be done and what, and, 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 and what, what is supposed to be done is you're supposed to do a weaving together with the realm of correspondence. So what you don't find in one system, you go to another system and you find the correspondence to it and you weave it together and get one central theme. So uh, I'll give you an example. Um, there's made mention that Oshun, which is Isis or Aset in, 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 uh, uh, in, in, in Kemet, but it's also a form, it would be a form of, it could be a form of Hera in Greek. Now don't, get, don't sleep on the Greek because the Greek is very important in some of the most important mythology there is, because that is when, like we say again, we misconstrued the time cycles. Greek mythology is black, comes from the Etruscans, the Eturians, the Tyranians are a form of the Typhonian. So this is what happens. You have your Typhonian dynastic, pre-dynastic Egyptians. And then you have your dynastic Egyptians, the Camites, which is your Amun, Osirian, Ra realm. Your Typhonian, which consists of Soot, Apet, Tyert, Apep, Kunsu, Mentu, and these older Typhonian gods, as well as Sekhmet. Sekhmet was replaced from the Typhonian era and became a part of the pantheon in the dynastic area, the Osirian era. Those, that particular Typhonian, which is the oldest, travel out of Kemet, but still remain in Kemet for the duration of Egyptian history. So there was never time that the Typhonian thing did not uh, uh, remain in Kemet. But the Typhonian is the oldest on the planet. So those, that particular Typhonian stuff become your Phoenicians, your Etruscans, and, filtered, and, and the whole Mesopotamian stuff that they talk about, and filtered on into Greece. So the original Greek are your Etruscan, and so you're talking about a black mythology. Now, Greek philosophy was stolen from Kemet. That's, uh, that, that predates Greek philosophy is almost, Greek philosophy is separated from Greek mythology almost 3,000 years. The Greek mythology was when the original inhabitants of that land were black. So it is very key that you understand the Greek mythology, you see. Now, I'll give you an example. You have a make mention in the Yoruba mythology that Oshun, the goddess Oshun, 
was treated was, was cheated out of the kingdom. So she had to work her way to be a form of the pantheon of Obatala, Legba, Shango, and uh, Ogun, which was the architects of the so-called physical matrix. And she had she was treated, she was cheated out of her her her, her portion of the earth. Well, you have to, to, to you have to look at a bigger picture and try to understand what went on. Ogu, uh, Oshun, Yemenya, Oya, and Olakun, and various female deities, the goddesses, belong to an older form of the chaos, uh, 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 the chaos sphere, uh, an older form of the um, uh, of the universe before creation. So our world is built on several other primal worlds. There was the, and those, those primal worlds lasted about the same time as creation now has lasted. And creation, let's just give a rough estimate, even with the white boys did one in 98, was uh, 13 billion years. We had creation is 13 billion years because you can't really calculate this thing based on time. But just for the, just to have an understanding, 13 billion years is the creation. We, you got some other chairs in the back, right? Uh, well, well, whatever the deal is. I think you got some more. 13 billion years. So as long as the 13 billion years that we have in creation, you had a primal world that lasted just as long. That was the world of the great mother. So the old shoe thing being, being cheated out of her place in creation is basically uh, a, a same rendition of that great mother, Tiamat, a Typhonian realm that existed before creation. In the Egyptian mythology, Ra comes into being by overthrowing Apep. That's a form of the great mother. That's a form of the great mother. Now, that particular pantheon of the great mother and those particular beings that used to rule in that particular time, that became what is known as the underworld and the dark side, and that is the feminine energy. So any of the thing, any, so the original aspects of what you call the satanic realm is basically the overthrowing of the feminine realm. You see what I'm saying? And that's basically your church is a male dominated system that basically was for this particular creation after the feminine realm. And that's what they're trying to talk about, the father. You see what I'm saying? Now, these particular entities that are, that, where is the West African entities, these particular entities are what we call the Apollo spirits or the Congo rites. These are those dark side entities. This is a feminine realm, and this is the realm that will rule again. In India, it's called the return of Shakti, the Shakti power. In the Kabbalah, which is the Hebrew lure, it's called the return of Shatina. And in uh, return of Shakina, in uh, um, Kemet, it's the return of Mayat. The return of Mayat. Um, in Greece, it's the return of Gaia or uh, Echidna. So this is the realm that's being ushered in, the feminine realm. But that feminine force is in both male and female of that feminine realm, which is the Kundalini energy. That's the feminine force inside of us. And this is the war that's being fought inside of our bodies. You see, inside of our bodies. So, um, so, um, so the only two only holdouts because the the, the warrior di, di, was directly over the Zarabanda realm was Ogun, and so that's in the book African Ogun, the book called African Ogun, and basically Kumbanda or Zarabanda, the, the the warrior for that particular realm in in the in the, in the Christian mythology would be the Archangel Michael. It'll be the Archangel Michael. Uh, you know, um, it would be the Archangel Michael. In Kemet uh, a mythology, it would be a form, of, a form of Ra. This is just the feminine, this is just the masculine order 
that rule this form of creation. Now, this form of creation. And so, and so, um, that particular order is now moving out and on it, and is on its way out. So there's a little bit of squirmish right now. Uh, you got Legba. It's just four deities that's acting the ass. Legba, Ogu, Obatala, and even Shango. They don't want to get up off of the power because they don't want the power being usurped over them into the new aspect because they've been ruling all these this, this long period of time. And so in, 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 it, is, it, it sounds crazy, but in actuality, these gods have a form of senility and mental illness also. And so they don't want to go, but they're very old. They are 13 billion years old, and they're very old. They were young 13 billion years ago, and their parents were very old. And they overthrew their parents, and the parents became human. So we are the parents to the gods that we worship now. You see, to the gods that we worship now. Uh, to, that we worship now. This is all in scholarship. We can break this shit down. You see what I'm saying? That's the good part about it and all. We don't have to deal like we, we had to take things face value in the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, and even in the 70s or whatever, because we didn't deal with scholarship. So basically, we just had to even believe, just you had to believe in it. You see what I'm saying? Or you basically, you can't, could debunk, debunk it with whatever scholarship you have now. Now this stuff is all basically um, uh, I've been explained through scholarship, and basically um, uh, uh, I got 200 tapes out to deal with all this type of information. But anyway, dealing with this, these four renegades um, are acting the ass. Now immediately what happened when this Zarabanda realm, which is also the realm of Osiris, if you want to cross-reference it, when it started rising back up, Immediately, the women in this particular realm, uh, 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 Ohun, Yemen, Yah, and Arya, haul ass back to their realm. So basically, they went back to the realm they used to be dominant over. You see what I'm saying? Now, uh, there's a book called uh, The Glory of Hera. So you can, if you want to get a more of a, a, a if you want to say, well, I want to learn a little more about that feminine book called The Glory of Hera, because you just need the artist, uh, you just need the, uh, the author of the, of the book. The Glory of Hera, and in this particular book it talks about Hera, which was one of the titans, because the titans was overthrown by Zeus and the Olympians. Zeus is Yahweh, Zeus, Ra, uh, and these male deities. It, it would be, uh, it would be a form of um, Oladumare, that male the deity. So once that feminine realm was overthrown, to give you the Greek myth out, that's why I say it was very important. You can't throw out nothing. We threw out the baby with the bathwater. We have to weave this stuff together in scholarship so you can get a clear understanding. You see what I'm saying? So it's almost like a science that you got to go back in and weave this stuff together. You see what I'm saying? So as a result, Hera, which was a young titan at the time, a feminine titan, when there Feminine realm with the Titans, which now the feminine realm consists of both male and female, a part of the great mother. So when that realm was overthrown by this masculine realm, which was just basically the younger children, usurped the power over the parents. And when, so when Hera was overthrown in the Babylonian, it would be Tiamat overthrown by Marduk. Get the book, uh, uh, several books, um, Alexander Hadel's book, the Babylonian Genesis by Alexander Hadel, um, a book called From Distant Days, something Benjamin is the last name. Uh, several ones give you that particular one. There's a book called, I think it's called uh, Mesopotamian Mythology. Anyway, the, the, that particular Tiamat, the great mother being overthrown, is in uh, Papyrus, it's called the Enuma Elish. You know, so you got this stuff around the world that says the same story. So when this particular realm was overthrown, let's go back to the Greek story. When this particular realm was overthrown by these particular young tyrants, Zeus and whatever his crew of men that was ruling needed consorts. 
to consult with these feminine entities and rather to be thrown into Tartarus or thrown into the Tartarus. Whenever you hear the underworld, you hear Tartarus, you hear Hades, you hear hell. Satan was bound in hell. Whenever you hear that, that means that those particular primal gods were thrown and bound in physical bodies. So there you go. You are the Satans. The Satans, the Titans, the Titans. Get the book. Alexander Hislop's book, The Two Babylons. Alexander Hislop, The Two Babylons. Um, uh, also, you can get uh, Gerald Mash's Natural Genesis volume, uh, Natural Genesis, two volumes. Um, second book, uh, yeah, Natural Genesis, two volumes. So, in order, in order for those particular entities, Ophrun in the West African, Hera in the Greek, and a form of Aset, a head hair rule, because it, it's composite of the same entity in the Camite, in order for them not to be thrown in physical bodies like their family, they had to become consort to the male deity. So Hera had to become a wife to Zeus, otherwise she'd have gotten cast down too. So, so they they had to come home and they rule as gods and goddesses in the Olympian realm. But, uh, uh, which is the realm, which is the realm that's been ruling over us for the last 13 billion years. But they had to take an ordinate position, although they were high goddesses, they were still subordinate under that male deity. They were consorts. So as a result, um, directly over Zarabanda. Ogun, Ovatala, um, Chango, and the Legba. Now, you know damn well the Legba is not going to uh, be a subordinate under Zarabanda because he's the, he is the opener of the gate. Now, what are we talking about here? Now, what we're talking about here is two systems. We're talking about the Seraphonic realm and the cherub Cherubonic realm. Seraphims and Cherubims. The cherubims, you know, would be the dark side, the demons, the hell in the mythology. The seraphim would be your archangels. But the archangels are angels of light. They're an illusionary phenomenon. That's the matrix. So they rest within the human brain. Where's the human? The matrix they're talking about. Everything that we talk about here that you're thinking is out in space and this what is inside of the human body. This is the universe. Now, the... The, the, uh, the matrix that we talk about is the human brain. It gives you this signal and makes you think that this shit is real. And it gives you angles of light to make you think that this is real based on the reflections or the refractions or whatever, the angles of light. Angles, and you get the word angels. But it's in the human brain. But there's a kingdom that will rise up this up under the human brain, and that's your pineal, pituitary, thalamus gland, and that whole nine yards. You see. Thalamus, and there's the hypothalamus, you know. So that is the, the kingdom of the pearly gates of Zion. And it is so Lucifer is in hell. Lucifer is the light bringer, is the king, is the pineal up under the human brain. You see. So one is the God of the living. 
which is the matrix. And then there's the God of the dead, that's Osiris, Zarabanda, Anubis, um, the God of the dead, Lucifer. So the, 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 the biblical aspect, that particular realm, there was the biblical aspect of the old patriarchal aspect was talking about, I am the God of the living and not the dead. So it can't be the most sublime God if he's not the God of the dead, because every motherfucker going to die. So it's right in the, in the Bible. I am the God of the living, the day side, but not the dead. So in the Kabbalah, you have your sephira, which represents the manifested universe. But you have behind your sephira, the Kabbalah, you have behind the sephira, it's called the Kalipoth. That's called the tunnels of set. The Kalipoth is the dark side or the night side of the tree that will rule in the future. So that's Zarabanda. You see, that will rule in the future. Uh, you know, uh, that will rule in the future. So now, because uh, I gave out the formula the last time, I'll give it out again, but if you, if you have problems, you can get that brother back there with that fez on and he can mix you up some co concoction. Or uh, either you can somehow locate me and I can mix you up some. But we're going we gonna to name him Sir Mix-a-Lot. <laughs> Sir Mix-a-Lot. And then you can get in touch with that brother, get his number, and mix up some concoction and stuff. Uh, there's an art form to it, but then again, if you want to go on your own, boom. <laughs> Do that. And so that is, uh, that is for the people that, you, 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 you know, for the people that don't want to get with the, the, the water masters that they say in Dune or the mix master, so mix a lot and all, you see what I'm saying, is uh, you could get Northern Lights, because I'm getting ready to mix up another concoction next week. <laughs> uh, Northern Lights, no, this is three things you can get, but basically, but the premium thing is Windsor's, not Windsor's, uh, Windsor's Canadian Whiskey, and Kingsley's London Dry Gin. Now, for all you health people, this don't have shit to do with health, because this is talking about the spirit realm. The spirit realm is above your millet, your grain, your wheat, and all that bullshit. This is above Sadie. This is above Laila Africa. This is the spirit realm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, you know, one is with something, this is the spirit realm. Now, when you go to the gods, they require this. So if you are God, you should require this. I'd be like, God damn it, if you ain't gonna get, how the hell is you gonna drink something and I can't drink it? You know what I'm saying? So, Lon Kingsley's London Dry Gin and Kingsley's London Dry Gin and Windsor's Canadian Whiskey. If your store is out of Windsor's Canadian Whiskey, you get Northern Lights Canadian Whiskey, or this R&R. &R. But the premium is the Windsor. But the Northern, now, what happens is this, so, put this, so, so this is for, because this is going out, what you call it, no. And the Spirit said, don't hold back the funk, because there's two <laughs> goddesses. And he's called the two sisters, Tiatia. Now, remember those two names, because see, it's one thing to get the concoction, but it's another thing when you call on those two sisters. And that's what was missing. So they came to me last week and said, you remember, you forgot the two sisters. So the two sisters, Tiatia and Sheola. Now, what are, these, what are these four entities, these entities? These entities, they call them the outer gods. That means outside of this known universe is called the universe B which is separated by a black hole. That particular black hole we moved into on May the 21st. And I think I still got, I got the book around here somewhere, the, the, astro the astronomy magazine. But those particular outer gods was locked out of creation, came through around March, uh, around March of 2001. And those particular outer gods, the four I told you, Sheola, Omagumu, Tiatia, um, Tiatia, uh, um, Otintia, and Shumala, they came through. Those are the outer gods that's beyond the known creation. 
They are here now. That's four to assist their brothers and sisters that was locked down in torturous Hades or whatever. So I banded 11 gods we're going to get into in a few minutes. They, they are here too now. But those two nurses, or those two sisters, the nurse was Teacher and Sheola. And then the other sister that just burned up shit. That burned down stuff. She said she was responsible for the damn Pentagon. You know, there's two sides of the story that went on. But anyway, uh, when you mix the concoction, so basically what you do is, is you, let me, let me put this on here so you don't be fucking up some good liquor. <laughs> you want to buy these half gallons. Or, no, this is, this is a half gallon, ain't it? Okay, half gallon. Is this two liters? Yeah, half gallon. Or you can just buy whatever you... Uh, this stuff is very inexpensive. It, the half gallon, so okay, get, let's, let's get the price down, because so that's very important. <laughs> All right. The Kingsley's, now the reason why I say Kingsley is for one reason. Now, let me explain this stuff here. First of all, for the people, I said yesterday, this alcohol that you call, that you all, <laughs> I'm all righteous now and shit. The alcohol, the science of the of fermentation of this particular alcohol, this distillation or the stilling of the alcohol was given to the Europeans by the Moors in the 16 universities. So they learned how to do all that by the Moors. The Moors is the one that gave that particular science to the Europeans. All right. That's, that's where the origin of this shit comes from. All right. Um, they basically, they gave them a complete civilization, and we know this, but this here too, this is Moorish, this is African, you see, like I said yesterday, they even gave them, the, the Moors gave them the suit coat, because they took the suit coat from Nigeria, you see, so that, there, there ain't no such thing as white man clothes, you see, now, <laughs> now, uh, so, so the king's list is, Ten dollars, ten ninety nine, I think. Depends on where you go. For the, for the half gallon, and it's about five dollars, about, about six dollars maximum for just the, the fifth. You see. And okay, you got other. Okay, you got the Windsors is about fourteen bucks for the half gallon. That's the premium. Then there's uh, Northern Lights, which is about. 13 or 11? About 12. about 12. That's the cheapest one. And then the R&R &R is about what? About 14. About 14, yeah, the R&R &R and the Windsor. But the, uh, but the Northern Lights is good, too. That's for the half gallon. But if you, if you buy them with the fifth, they're only like $6, $7, whatever. Now, the key here is you take, just because there's a way, I don't want you to, to mix no, to have no good liquor falling out on the bottle, this shit is precious now. You can't be wasting the damn juice, you see. Now, it comes with a pour top. <clears throat> give you the instructions. You pop this top off, up, you do it. Now, this is how you mix this thing. You start with the gin first, the Kingsley's London Dry Gin. You pop the top off. The pour top, you take the pour top off with the Kings of London dry gin. You get you a cup that bends on the end, not a glass. It's got to be a cup that bends. And you pour that, you pour the London dry gin down halfway in a cup that bends at the top. A tall cup, you see. Or one of them plastic cups or a good big paper cup that bends at the top. Then you pop the top off the Canadian whiskey, and you pour the Canadian whiskey in to the gin, the rest of the gin. You mix half and half. Then you take that cup and you bend it at the top. I'm just telling you how you do it easy. And you pour that cup of gin back into the Canadian whiskey. And you get two of these babies. But I have to explain how to mix the shit. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, you know, <coughs> huh? Yeah, now, there's a couple of other science on this now. You don't want no Tango Ray, and you don't want no, uh, the other one right up under there, um, not, not, no, not, not American like that shit there. 
that's maybe that's special for Negroes. You don't want no Tangeray and you don't want no uh, Barnett. You don't want those because what it is, the alcohol content in those are higher, so you can't get rid of that gin taste. But you got to get that Kingsley's or Kingsley's or Glenmore. You want to get those London dry gin. Now, but you know, you don't want the one in the green bottles, the Barnett, London dry gin, and the doggone Kangaroo, because you can't get rid of that gin taste. Well, you want to get the Glenmore and the Kingsley's. I would prefer the Kingsley's. It's cheaper, but it's mild. And the Glenmore is good, too. It's about the same. But you want to get that. All right. Then any, now, whatever the whiskey you get, you don't want to get no um, Canadian mist. You see, you want to get the ones I told you. You see, there's a science to it. And in 24 hours, you know, basically you can start drinking it once you mix it. But 24 hours, the juice get a little more sweeter because that Canadian whiskey is sweeter. Now, for healing purposes, you sisters can't be cutting this shit with no coke or nothing, no mixed drinks, no daiquiris and all that kind of shit. You got to go with the science. Say, <laughs> only and O'Keefe and them ain't going down with no motherfucking damn grenadine and no syrup or whatever that shit is. <laughs> and so, what's the name of cutting it for a month and wasn't getting the science on it? Now, now, once you drink this thing, now for healing purposes, if you got AIDS, drink this shit and call on Sheol and Okicha. You got a toothache, ass ache, whatever, this shit works. We're talking on an advanced level now. Now you can believe me or you can run to the goddamn cracker and give you some Tylenol, Thorazine, whatever. <coughs> This ain't, got, this ain't got shit to do with the health and all this and all that kind of shit here. You're going to be fucked around and ain't going to get no juice. This is for the gods only. You see what I'm saying? Now, that's why anything the church tell you not to do is for a reason. Because they're trying to hold down the other realm. Now, Okita and Shaola, so that's for healing purposes. You call on them two sisters. T.H., excuse me. Oh, teacher might burn your ass up. Uh, Tiacha and Shayola. And they will heal. Now, for, for social purposes, this drink the elixir. And uh, uh, a brother, uh, Ade, explained to me on this one that it was, this is pH balance, right? That means that if you're drinking this, as soon as you get in the car, your alcohol level disappears. <clears throat> now, other things that you got to understand in this war, when you are driving in an automobile, always imagine a Nubus. Anybody don't know what a, anybody don't know what a Nubus is? Raise your hand. A Nubus is a black dog that you see in Egypt. You ever see the black dog with the gold ears? And there's, uh, there's, there's one where he's standing up with a man's body, but the one you want is Anubis where he's laying down on all fours with the tail sticking up. You imagine and poo, Anubis, Anup, Ani is several names, but Anubis or Anpu is the, is the Camite name. You imagine Anubis on top of your car and you cannot get stopped by the damn cops. You can ride where the hell you want to go. You can drink this shit. You can smoke your herb or whatever. <laughs> you see. But the problem here is we have been conditioned not to believe because we are Christian creatures. That means you have bred something. You know what I'm saying? Like they say about the goldfish in the goldfish bowl. He swims around the bowl, and when you put him in the ocean, he still swims around in the same pattern. You see. So we are Christian creatures. So we'll believe the white man because the white man has convinced us that he is the authority and the criteria and the litmus test to all that is right and all knowledge and all that is official. See what I'm saying? Now, like Grace Jones say, I am superficial. I hate all that is official. You see. So 
He is not the litmus test. So I'm telling you something spiritual, you see, that works. So Anubis, Anubis and Pooh, if you put and poo on the airplane, the airplane won't go down. Just put him on the top of the damn barrier jet or the whatever. <laughs> if you put him on your car, the doggone cops won't stop you. He is the guide to the other world. Now, the same elixir, if you spit it four ways in your car, you can ride all the hell you want. I told you, because one of the sisters was spitting the rum, uh, Shakira, she was spitting the rum. This was in Atlanta. She was spitting the rum four ways with no insurance, and she, and she got stopped like in 97 and gave the motherfuckers a damn 87 insurance policy. They said, move right along. <laughs> they showed you that in Star Wars. Uh, you know, in Star Wars, and the guy said, move right along, you see. Jedi mind, Jedi mind tricks, you see. So these are things that you can do for protection. Now, for women, if you're walking at night or whatever, you take Anubis and you put him on a chain. Now, some people say, what do you mean put him? I ain't got no doubt. You imagine these things. The realm of imagination is the strongest realm in the universe. So you imagine Anubis on a chain walking with you, and nothing will happen to you. You see what I'm saying? Nothing will happen to you. You know, you men, if you want to get it up and you can't rise to the occasion, call on Papa Dede. He's worked several times. <laughs> but if that don't work, call on Cacumbo. Cacumbo. That's the, that's the motherfucker that's, that just, that's all he does right now, just be screwing. Cacumbo. Cacumbo. Which is very key also, Cacumbo and all, because this is all related to what we talk about here um, today. Um, so, uh, um, but, so you don't have to worry about the cops. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about the cops. You know, you see. So uh, call on Cacumbo. A um, couple of things here. A uh, brother had shown me uh, a, uh, a, a part of the Temple of Seti One. Well, they showed helicopters, um, tanks, and airplanes, and all that. But uh, the part that he showed, they had filled it in a little bit with artist rendition to try to highlight it. And so, uh, and and, I, and, I, and and so, and my brother sent me this book yesterday, and I've seen this book several, for a couple, about, about two years now, or about a year now. And he sent me this book yesterday, and it's in this particular book where they show at the Temple of Seti when they got helicopters. Tanks, airplanes, and all that, and all. So the people that want to see that can pass that around, and all. You, you think you can zoom in on this thing here? Oh, you? Oh, that's right. You got the real deal, Jimmy. You got a show on the Discovery Channel that, that's been on for a couple of weeks too. And it's dealing with this. Yeah. So the key here, the Temple of Seti One, which is this temple down at the bottom. Uh, I got a, a book from 19. Oh, you got it. All right. I got a book from. I got a book that showed a uh, late 1800 painting of this temple. And this is a temple they never show. They, it's hard to, uh, when the tours, when they have these tours in Kemet, they never visit this temple. Very rare that they will be, visit this temple. And this is the temple. It's one of the most important temples in Kemet because it is the temple in the Egyptian holy land, Abydos. You see, long before there was a holy land in Israel, Motherfucking holy land, you go there and you got one motherfucking wall in the whole damn country. That's it. One damn wall. A wall and a, and, and a mosque that was built after so, such and such time or whatever, way late. And that's it in the whole damn city. You see, you know, and fake Jews, fake white Jews, you know. And um, so, uh, it's fake white Jews. And um, so, this particular, uh, but the whole, but but, but Kemet has monument after monument after monument. But anyway, the Temple of Seti One is one that they don't, uh, people don't, they don't, they, in the tours that most people don't go. Dr. Ben used to take his people to Seti One. Now, Seti One was built by Ramesses II when he was 22 or 24 or whatever, when his father Seti the first, Ramesses the first died. Now, it's very interesting because I have a picture of this temple from the late 1800s, an uh, artist drawing, a painting. And, this, and, and they didn't show this temple again until 
1982, and the, and the temple is completely uh, torn down and put back together, and the, and the architecture is totally different. That's because this was probably one of the most important temples in Kemet because this temple also and the tomb of Seti the fourth is also said that the white man was created in this particular Seti one complex. You see, it said that the white man was created. The, the Tamahu, you see what I'm saying, created and all. So, um, so they show the airplanes and all this, we pass that around and, and you just look at it as the people they show the, the hieroglyph and they, they try to explain in that what those things are. And if you look real close, you can see the helicopters and all those types of things and all uh, those types of things. Um, huh? Okay. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff in this and the artwork in the, the Temple of Seti One is some of the most profound, is some of the best uh, craftsmanship that the, that the uh, hieroglyphics that the, that the Egyptians ever did, or the Camites ever did. Uh, let me pull some libations right quick, and um, get some, you know, and uh, and then I want to talk a little bit. I want to give uh, on the tape for the people that's interested in getting the tape. I want to give a little description of these particular gods that's going to come, or uh, what they do. The eleven ones. I gave the description of Sheol and all those particular ones and all, and um, the whole master. Um, Kakumbo, and all, you know, and stuff. Now, 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 uh, now, Kakumbo is, is the Kumbo, Kakumbo is in the same represented, uh, a representation of a Shiva or a Dionysus, which in actuality is the Christ before they, before they made this fake Christ figure, uh, this fake Christ figure, the little girly man, Jesus, you see what I'm saying, that the Romans did because they was in the little boys. You see what I'm saying? You know, you know, uh, you know so basically, uh, Shiva, and I got a book, I got a tape called Heru and the Combat Myth, and I go into this particular science, but Shiva in Greece, no, Shiva in India, Dionysus in Greece, and Osiris in Kemet, but Osiris, we only get one version of the story, the Plutarch story, but there was mass areas of the Osirian story that we don't even have now because a lot of that is, the, 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 the uh, Egyptologists don't let it out. But all of these come from the Typhonian era when this was set, a soot. So this mythology of Osiris, you know, now soot, was uh, what you call Set, which is the enemy of Osiris in the Typhon, in the, in, the, in the Osirian era, the attributes of Osiris with the penis and the obelisk and Mim with the penis, the attributes of, of those gods are mainly Osiris and Horus combined prior in the dynastic era, in the, before the, the dynastic, the pre-dynastic era, era, uh, era, the attributes of those particular gods was all attributed to Set Typhon. A soot typhon. So when, 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 when the Typhonian priesthood was overthrown, the, the motif and the attribute of the primordial god of all time was woven into Osiris. You see. But that particular set typhon travel out becomes Shiva, because his name is Shut, which you get the word shit. The word shit means excrement, which means filth, which means that which existed before creation, cosmic dark matter. So you get the word shit, shit. So you know the word shit is the, one of, is the most ancient name for God. So you get the word shit or shut or soot or set or setesh, sutet, melchizedek. All that's the same thing. But soot or shit becomes shiva or shiva. This was, and so it goes up into India, yes, Shiva, and also it goes into Bacchus. You get Bacchus, the Bacchanalian realm, Bacchus, and also you get Ash, ba Baal, Baal, all these are different names of the Typhonian god that branched out. And, but also Dionysus is that set Typhon aspect, or uh, 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 the uh, dynastic, pre-dynastic 
Typhonian aspect. So if you want to understand what pre-dynastic mythology is, you go to study Shiva and Dionysus. But if you want to find out more about uh, Osiris, we don't get anything but that same old drama. But obviously it had to be more on the characteristics of him. You know what I'm saying? You need to study Shiva or Dionysus. Now all of these motifs are not a Shiva, and mainly the Dionysus motif was woven into Jesus Christ. And then they whitewashed him or they made him into a girly man by taking the sexual aspect out and just left that one little thing, you know what I'm saying, when he uh, got busy or wanted to get busy or got busy with Mary Magdalene. You see, that's the only aspect you get, but they made him an anti-sexual entity for the Roman church. You see what I'm saying? Because they was in the little boys. You see what I'm saying? And hated the feminine energy. You see what I'm saying? Feminine energy. But in his original form, that's what he did. That's what he did. He laid that pipe. You see what I'm saying? Straight up pimp style. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know. Now this is not, you know. And I know, and, I, and some of the people, because we're in 2000, see what I'm trying to tell you, and I said this yesterday, it's interesting here, because uh, I did a, a, like I said, I did a conference in, uh, in, in March last year, the Hemet Summit, and I was talking all this sexual thing, and all the so-called Negroes and conscious Negroes went by and lost his damn mind. <laughs> but here it is, in September, the white folks had an international conference somewhere in America, I think in New York or somewhere, and white people came from all over the world to have the stuff, and it was talking about the sexual aspect of spirituality. See what I'm saying? But so we have become the Victorian, Amish, Pilgrim, Mennonite, Puritan, white people, and the white people have become the ancient Africans. And we have done this yet under the guise of religion, because religion is anti-sex and anti-woman. You see what I'm saying? And at this particular time, you shouldn't be fucking with no religion. Christianity, give it up, is fake. Islam is fake. Buddhism is fake because the simple fact, it is the later version of the Vedic system. If you're not dealing with a scientific program to you raise your, that you raise yourself up to the Godhood, and you become the deity, then you're fucking around with the wrong shit. It's just fake. Those are byproducts. Now, like I said yesterday, Rudolf Steiner tells you that religion, religions occur when those mystery systems or the ancient educational systems of the past deteriorate and become defunct. Then, as a result, they sweep up the fragments and give you a moralistic brand with a little bit of uh, mythology motif woven into it, and that's religion, and it has nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. As a matter of fact, every single thing that every single thing that Christianity tell you not you don't supposed to be doing, don't supposed to be drinking, don't supposed to be screwing, that's all a part of the goddamn spirituality. Everything, and especially fucking. That's why I'm talking about this shit, because the only way out of here is the same motherfucking way you got down here in the first place. And that's from busting some damn nuts. <laughs> knocking some boots. So in one way, that is the mothership. We'll go back into that in a few minutes. How you got down here? Somebody knocked some damn boots. Well, that's how you get in the fuck up out of here. And that's why the penis, that's why they were telling you in Kemet, the penis is all over Egypt, the obelisk. That is it. In India, it's the lingam and the yoni, which is the penis and the vagina. That's the mystery to this shit. And religion tell you otherwise. Tell you otherwise, because religion was made to control the masses, and it has nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. Whatsoever. So, let's split to the gods right quick, and, um, you know, and um, give them some juice. Did I spit on anybody? No. Oh, okay. Because was up. 
close yesterday and I spit right on somebody's shirt. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Uh, well, I should pour him a little glass if I had one. You know, but anyway. Um, and also, this is for the, you know, the libate the gods. You can pour them a little glass of this and they drink it up. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, but um, I want to call on the Apollo spirits and um, uh, the Apollo spirits and stuff. There's a book, there's a book called Apollo Manombe by Carlo, Carlo Gardeno Montenegro, but I think the book is now, it, you might be able to get it, but since then, I, uh, since I've been talking about it, I think they rushed and took it out of print, but anyway, we'll give the characteristics on the tape, you can get the tape. Okay, so we're going to call on the uh, Zara Banda, I say, okay. El Cristo Negro, I say, La Spiritus in Cranquilla. Santissima Muerte, San Simon, El Cristo Rey, Madre de la Luna, Madre de Agua, La Santissima Pedro Iman, Francisco de Triti Reyes, Mama Chola. Okay, let me give these other five. Locayo, Cheola, Tiesia, Otincha, Chumala, Omagumu, uh, and Cacambo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which I'll go into the actual, I'll go into the actual, uh, uh, the actual uh, hanky panky of Kakumbo and what he had to do to bring forth a certain realm by, you know, screwing. But we'll go into that type of thing because um, the things that I told people that was going to go down yesterday, which we will go back over in a few minutes or later on, it's already started going down. Some sisters, now especially some of the sisters, you know, you know, some of the sisters, and some of the sisters right in here probably have been visited by some spirits sexually. Has anybody in here been visited by some spirits sexually? You see? Well, one of the sisters was brave enough. But, uh, you know, but don't worry about it because if you get hatting, you know what I'm saying, just put on your negligee and get busy because they will be coming very soon because that is a part of this thing. You see, uh, that is a part. But I want to give some characteristics of these particular ones. El Cristo Negro, as you know, is a crucified black Christ. Uh, crucified black Christ. Uh, La Spirit, La Espiritus and Tranquilus. Those are seven entangled African spirits all together. La Santissima Muerte. Now, that's a real motherfucker. That's the one that came and screwed me. And then got, then I, you know, came and screwed me one day. And I was like, man, you need to come on back tomorrow. I don't like Motherfucker telling me when I got to come back to screw somebody. I said, all these goddamn spirits in the world, I got to get the one with issues. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that shit was great. So you brothers, you're going to get visited by the sisters in the spirit realm. And there's a reason why. And you sisters going to get visited by the brothers. And usually, the ones that show up, man, is, and, and it might be several spirits, but it's one that comes, with, but, but the image that comes uh, to most sisters in, that's around the country that's been visited by this is a tall, black brother with a big Johnson, <laughs> a big tallywhacker, a big dipstick. Mm. You know? Uh, in the image, anybody saw the, 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 the paint the moor of Spain, the brother with the moor, brother with the w long white on? It's, it's an image of an image brought about like that brother. See what I'm saying? An uh, 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 image brought like that brother, like a John Shaft, Richard Roundtree type Negro, the 1971 version, before the white women. You see? So, uh, so Santissima Muerte. She is one that sets over the graveyard. She's more like a segment figure. And uh, she's very jealous, too. Very jealous of uh, sister, also. Because she likes to hang around with El Cristo Negro. You know. So she's, uh, like, she's over the depth. She's, uh, she's over the ceremonies of the dead. Um, San Simon, very powerful one. He's over law and justice. Uh, law and justice. Uh, El Cristo Rey is one, he's the lord of the world, he's more like Amon-Ra, but that's a composite of the same El Cristo Negro. 
Um, Madre de la Luna, she is a uh, goddess of the moon, Luna mistress. Madre de Agua, she's a goddess of the water. La Santissima Pedra Eman is, uh, uh, he deals with black magic and mag black and white magic. Francisco de Strite Reyes is, uh, let's see what he deals with. Powerful secrets of the, he deals with the four winds. You know, more like the nature, like oil. Mama Shola, she's a uh, fertility one that deals with babies and stuff like that. Um, to deal with babies and stuff like that. So also, let me give some shout outs to some other entities. Um, Erzuli, I say. Oshun, I say. Yemenya, I say. Oya, I say. Sekmet, I say. Sekmayat, I say. Mayat, I say. Metatron, I say. Metronet, uh, Timothus, Timu, Timu, Himamit, Hamit, uh, uh, Hamit beings, uh, okay, Tachasis, okay, let me get a roll going, uh, uh, Papagete, Brigitte, Marasha, uh, hold on, let me get this roll going, um, Adam Grudy, uh, Dambalawedo, Adewedo, Olaku, Olaru, Oh, Chelsea, Arumala, Arumala, Babalu Aye, Het Heru, Sashet. Sashet is the goddess that sits by beside Tahuti and gives Tahuti his knowledge. Sashet. Sashet. Hekati. Um, that's the goddess. Oh, that's the goddess that's over most witches and magic. The goddess Hekati in Greece. Hecat. A froghead deity in Timet. The original is, is Hecate. Hecate, Hecate, Reckit, Met, Mut, Kunsu, Newt, Had it, Rahar Kuit, uh, Tiamat, Inanna, Ishtar, Aphrodite, Astarte, um, Kali, Kalima, Shiva, Rudra, Krishna, Radha, Balarama, Rama, Vertra, Danai, uh, Ten Mahabadivas, uh, Sri Lakshmi, uh, Tara, um, Cam, Sam, Samson, Delilah, Layla, Lilith, Lilithu, Lilu, Akidna, uh, um, Jason, Perseus, Medea, Apollo, uh, hold on, um, let's see. Uh, Nimian Lion, uh, let's see, Raziel, Samaza, Azazel, Sh Sh Cthulhu, Shabnigarov, Hastoff, Yosathos, uh, Nearly Hotep, Great Old Ones, Deep Ones, Dagon, Dogon, Naama, Naama, Ba, Na, Ka, Yuguru, Digitarian Stages, Lucifer, Beelzebub, the Kalipa, the Asuras, the Titans, the Nefers, the, ne the Netters, the Chapter Chiefs, uh, let's see, uh, Tahuti, Anubis, uh, Anunnaki, Cerebus, Terebus, Typhon, Latiathon, Leviathan, uh, Apex, Apex, Tyrex, Gaia, Eros, Dionysus, <laughs> Dionysus, Prometheus, uh, uh, um, uh, Okanos, uh, Tartarus, Eros, uh, um, I guess that's cool for right now. All right. Um, so, um, the movie Akasha, the movie Queen of the Dam is coming out Friday on the 22nd. Now, Aaliyah was killed as a sacrifice at 22, at age 22. And the movie is coming out on February 22nd. That's 2002, the second month, and 22. It's all a lineup. That's a ritual, you see. Now, Akasha, because this is the first time that the, the white people are going to admit that the Egyptians were black. You know, they never seem to can do that, even in two mummy movies. <laughs> and um, even in the Stargate and all, the Egyptians or the Camites are still in black. And you know, they always have this little shit here. Even with, and it, this much was a ritual, because even in Cleopatra and even in the mummy movies, that when they show black people 
end of doggone two mummy, uh, mummy and mummy returns, they were always slaves. You know, they're always holding something. Right, right. Even in damn um, Cleopatra. Now, but it's key to see the mummy returns for one reason. When you see a thousand, a million of Anubis warriors, that's very important. Because these entities that came through this particular so-called black hole or this, this other dimension or this black hole, this universe B, somewhat resembles those thousands of Anubis spirits or Anpu spirits that you saw in the mummy returns. And those particular Anpu spirits will return, but they're going to return in the sexual uh, sections of your bodies. So whenever you get mass horny, very soon they're going to take over this earth, but you're going out the same way you came in. You know, mass, big, orgiastic fuck fest. <laughs> so get ready. This is what the church been trying to hold down. This is what they created, Ebola, AIDS, and all that other shit for. Like I said yesterday, you, the church sanctions all wars. You ain't never seen no major church say, we're going against war in this country. But sex, that's another story. And that's why they got... T.D. Jakes and them people talking about women art thou loose. You see what I'm saying? Women art thou loose. <coughs> and that's Bishop Eddie Long and all these other fools. And that is too because the problem here is not white woman because she does not produce the Ojas, the Kali's, the Shakti's, the Gunners, the Tamas, the Russell's, and these vaginal lunar fluids called collars. Only one does that is the black woman. So therefore, they got to make you feel bad whenever you give up some damn booty. You see what I'm saying? Whenever you give up some doggone booty. You see? So Miss Ann, or Rebecca from Downingbrook Farm, that's why they're pairing her up with the black man, because she does not emit the gunners, the tamers, the rustlers, the overs, ogres, the shotkins, and the collars, which is all called collars, which is these lunar fluids in the black female. And, the, and, 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 and Beaver Cleaver, the white boy, don't produce the uh, astral body around the penis that can bring these particular fluids out. And he doesn't have the dance of Shiva. When you see Shiva dancing, it's not a dance like this. The dancing of Shiva, that's just the mythological one. The dancing of Shiva is down here when that brother get the dance going on. You know, when he really get in there and get the hump in his back. <laughs> you know, when you really roll it and shit with this thing here. <laughs> you know. The dance of Shiva, the white boy don't make those rhythms. So even white girls now, one of the brothers said, well, what you like about the black man? He said, she said, there are some rhythms that the white boy don't make. And we talked about that, how they can practice all day long. But... When we dance, even when we dance, there's moves in between the moves that they can't make. So they can practice all day long to get and become good at it, but there's moves in between the moves. You ever saw Solid Gold? They had a white dancer, and they had that one the one who was married to the one of the Temptations. And, and she was like the head dancer. And the mother was, they did have the moves all down, but she'd be doing all about four or five things between two moves. And that's the difference between this thing. They don't have that rhythm, what they call metronomics, which is the vibration of the universe. You see, they don't have that. And plus, they don't produce the astro body. So the lingam they're talking about is the black man has something to do with alchemy and the melanin. They don't produce the, the astro body. That's why today, although we, we got a mass amount of brothers that going to the other side, and even though we, in this day and age, we do have sisters that go with the white boys, but on the whole, in the mat, on, on the whole, when you talk about the amount of brothers going to side, that's why the black woman still prefers, she still, she st still prefers the black man, if she can find one. You see what I'm saying? She still can, you know, if she can find one. And, uh, uh, well, like I said, well, um, but anyway, uh, 
just getting back to this particular part, they kill Aaliyah and they made this movie, but they had to sacrifice her to make the potency of the movie. And I don't know if it was, I know the Illuminati or whatever might be doing it, but then again, I don't know if they know what they're doing because the energy of whenever you kill some particular body, you make that particular person immortal. And the energy behind that movie, it puts it on another level. It's just like right now, any person that dies, if you play their music, the music is much more stronger than the one that's living. So like people say, I play Bob Marley and I, hear, I literally hear his, his spirit come. Jimi Hendrix spirits come. You see what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, uh, 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 Ella Fitzgerald could break damn glass when she was living, but if you ever get some Ella Fitzgeralds now, it's, just, it's a whole nother ending. We was, we, we was listening to some Ella Fitzgeralds and the whole house just, just like, just, just stopped and you was just listening because the whole present, you see what I'm saying? So when you play dead people music, it's dead black people music is much more powerful. So they kill this particular sister, but number one, they still, for the first time, are going to admit that the Egyptians are black because the story goes in the, and you can get, you can get it, Anne Rice's Vampire Companion. Just, so you don't have to go through all the books, get the, so you don't have to go through all the books, get um, Anne Rice's Vampire Companion. Uh, you can get it either at Barnes and Nobles, Borders, uh, and several places might sell the Anne Rice Vampire Companion. Um, but in here, Akasha is an ancient Egyptian queen, uh, an ancient Egyptian queen, and even in the movie um, uh, Vampire in Brooklyn, uh, Eddie Murphy said that he came from Kemet, and he was looking for Angela Bassett because she was the one that he needed to link up with. But she was a dead nigga on the police force and all this kind of thing here, and couldn't get immortal in the juice and all that kind of stuff here, you see. But anyway, now, I, so, so now, this, now, some people say, man, this nigga's up there talking about some fake stuff or whatever. Anyway, in so many words, the uh, motifs that come for the whole Dracula thing, and even Bram Stoker, who wrote the first, the, the Dracula one, this, this, the model, they always had the vampire throughout history, but the Dracula one that is the model that all your, your, that all your most of your vampire movies are based off of, he even said, I got this in a dream, you see. But... Uh, but in, uh, in ancient mythology, Dracula is Osiris. Because, of, because in the, in the Di especially in the Dionysus mythology, the Dionysus almost parallels close to Dracula. And, but in the vampire, in, 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 in the, uh, uh, in the uh, Anne Rice's vampire encyclopedia, vampire companion, she even parallels her whole vampire myth and she, she, she shows the, the parallel between Jesus, which is the watered-down version of Osiris, and also Dionysus, you see. So it is the Dionysian figure which is the Dracula figure, which is the Dracula figure. So Akasha would be a form of Isis or whatever, I said. So Akasha is, comes from Africa. Okay, and an ancient Egyptian queen who became the first vampire. She is part of a vampire couple known in legend. Uh, in legend. And those who must be kept. Her name is inspired by Anne Rice and seen, and she got the name from a book called Lost Cities of Africa. She got the, she got the name Akasha. Now the word Akasha is the Sanskrit word which means blackness, black substance. In so many words, the word Akasha just means a melanin. If you break it down out of the human substance. Akasha, you get the word Akashic records, you get the word Akasha spirit, but it means mel melanin, because it means the black substance is the Sanskrit word of Akasha. But, but it comes from Africa, because she got it out of a book, Lost Cities of Africa. Becoming a queen upon her marriage, she was a mortal, Akasha, with her husband, King Inkiel. So that whole Inkiel or Inlel comes from the whole Mesopotamian, uh, Mesopotamian mythology. And Inkiel turns, uh, okay, Inkiel turned her people from cannibalism and encouraged them to be start eating grain. Well, the old cannibalism thing, that's just the white person's figment of imagination. But that whole thing of Isis or Aset in the mythology bringing wheat and grain to civilization. In so many words, uh, the black woman is the one who put the whole ecological system together. 
uh, the whole ecological system, uh, ecological system together, you know, you know, and, 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 and as far as everything that we have on the natural aspect of nature. Um, you know, so uh, let me, I want to get to the particular part. In all things, Akasha uh, disregards the belief of others and demons, and I'm going to get right to the particular point here. This, this is just, a, just a, giving a little thing on her, but I think it's on the next page. Um, and I'll just go ahead and, because uh, it's on the next page or whatever. But in so many words, basically, Akasha ends up being bitten by an entity called Amel. And Amel, which is melanin, thus he becomes the first vampire. Now let's break this down on the vampire mythology and also melanin. If you take it to a substance, then, the, then Dracula, the vampire stuff, is what melanin is anyway. It's almost identical. But she's bitten by a, a, a god called Amel. So now this stuff is real stuff to deal with because in a book called Sumerian Mythology, I found Amel in, one of the, in, in, in a book called Sumerian Mythology. You see what I'm saying? That God Armel, and that God Armel is supposed to be the evil one. But remember now, when they talk about evil and when they talk about dark side, remember now in Rome, and starting with the Hebrews, this trend started where they started, uh, started outlawing all inner mysteries of alchemy and rising to a higher level. They outlawed those mysteries and all those particular things that came relegated as evil in Rome, and even starting with Hebrew, some aspects of the Hebrew um, priesthood that wanted to keep the greater secrets to themselves. But even in the Bible, Isaiah 45, I will give you the treasures of darkness. In so many words, so when, whenever you hear the word sorcery, especially in Ezekiel, whenever you hear the word sorcery in the Bible, what is sorcery? Sorcery is the ancient arcane art of alchemy, which is the highest art in ancient chemi and you get chemistry and everything else comes from alchemy. So whenever you hear the word sorcery in the Bible and you thinking it's evil, that's alchemy, which is the study of melanin. So this whole campaign of what is called evil was to outlaw the mysteries of melanin, point blank, because Satan is melanin. You get the god Tahuti, which is the, Tahuti is the god over alchemy. Over alchemy. Tahuti is the Greek god Hermes. And Hermes in the Greek mythology is also associated with Hades. That's Satan. So Hermes, Hades, well Satan, Hades, Hermes, Tahuti, Alchemy, melanin. That's what this shit is about. And so the mysteries of melanin is outlawed and becomes satanic. So when you hear the word Satan, slip on, slip, which means black substance, on, which is Anubis, the dog, trip on, chase on, Satan, it just means melanin. These are formulas and it has nothing to do with some evil. Even the word Eve, Eve. El. You get the word El, you get the word Al, you get the word Elohim. It means mother and son. Evil. You get the word Eve, which you know is mother. Then you get the word El, or Al, Elohim, all of that. Al is S-O-N, S-U-N. You see what I'm saying? Elohim, the sons and the daughters. But Evil just means mother and son. Well, what is the mother and the son? The mother and the son is Typhon, the great mother, and her son Soot. And her son Soot. Or Leviathan and Behumat. Or Kid, uh, Kidna and the Sphinxes. In so many mythologies, they talk about there's a mother and a son. There's a mother and a son. You know, that's the one that was overthrown, the mother and the son. So the Messiah, the Messianic Messiah, that is a masculine Messiah, is the son of the mother. The son of the father is some fake shit. You see, the son of the mother. Even Mary, Joseph is, not, is non-existent in the particular aspect, but that would also be a form of Osiris or whatever, in these particular mythologies. But that, why the hell you think the damn Catholic Church 
put more emphasis on Mary than they even do God. Mary, mother of God. Because that's our set, Isis. Get the book, the, 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 the cult of the black virgins. And it, oh, that's, that, I mean, this is old news for you people that's been in this shit for years. But the mother and the son. Now, there is a dual aspect that the Messiah, the Messiah is a dual aspect, both male and female. Because you get the words ha, ma, ku. Heru, maya, and ku means pyramid conjoined. Horus, maya, ha, ma, ku. Harmachus, the Sphinx. And the Sphinx is both male and female, um, um, male and female entity. You see what I'm saying? So, Amel, Amel is this particular entity which, uh, which bites Akasha, fuses itself into the blood system, and Akasha becomes the first, uh, the first uh, vampire. Let's look up Amel. First of all, Alchemy, which is all this stuff is talking about alchemy. Number one, alchemy, in so many words, is the study of melanin. Alchemy, the process devised in the Middle Ages, which, which, which is basically, uh, she would put that and all, but we know the alchemy comes, when they say the Middle Ages, anytime you hear the word Middle Ages, what is that? What is the Middle Ages? The Moors. Time you hear the word Middle Ages or Dark Ages? The Moors. So alchemy process devised in the Middle Ages because the Europeans get the concept of alchemy from the Moors. The Moors takes the co concept of alchemy from where? Kemet. You see, everything is alchemy. The brother was up there saying he, he knows about ancient Egypt. I'm like, wait a minute. There's only one raw law. The motherfuckers talking about ancient Egypt. They don't know nothing about alchemy. You don't know shit about Kemet. Because all them gods and goddesses are formulas inside of you. The alchemical body. So any motherfucker talking about that, I know ancient Egypt and don't know about that. There's only one goddamn art form in, Al in, in Kimmy, the royal art, alchemy. Everything is based on alchemy, and alchemy is the study of Al-Kim, Al, which means God, and Kim, which means black, the black god, God of the perfect black Osiris, which is fucking melanin. You see, which is melanin. So, there's, so alchemy is the, is, is the highest art form. In alchemy, you get hermetic, the her, you get the hermetic system, or the system of Tehuti. Music comes out of alchemy. It is melanin put to scale, called muses. You see, most of your food, the spices, and all that type of, type of stuff where you get cooking is alchemical. You see what I'm saying? But there's also the alchemical components of sex, sexual alchemy, which will be uh, also talking about also again sexual alchemy by Donald Tyson, which is dealing with them goddamn spirits that's gonna start fucking y'all asses in about a couple of days. Get ready. So all the thing I'm doing is to see motherfucker be like that nigga up there crazy. But when homeboy and homegirl come and start knocking boots on your ass, don't be scared. Just sit back and enjoy this shit. It ain't got nothing to do with your husband, cause he's gonna be over there, cause gonna be a motherfucker on him, screwing him. <laughs> Because this is between you and your own universe. First of all, there's no such thing as marriage in the aspect of you don't belong to your damn. That's some white man shit and some fucking Catholic shit for control. You are an entity in your own universe. So when the motherfucker come up in your bed and start screwing you, the brother don't get mad. Because the motherfucker's going to become visiting your ass. All right? They don't get ignorant when your sister start getting knocked up the right way. <laughs> and you sisters don't get ignorant when the brother start getting his shit on. Because they coming. This is, the, this, is the, this is the greatest secret known to man. We'll go back into this thing again. It's those a million Anubis entities that you see in the movie. But they're not coming as some physical thing. They're coming through the gateways of sex. So y'all get serviced when this shit come down. Because it's going to come anyway. I'm just giving you fair warning because it's going to come anyway. It ain't got nothing to do. It's got something to do with your soul. And it's going to be your soul fucking these entities. And you don't exist. So there's going to be a great copulation. But it's going to be in the other realm, but it's going to be inside of you. So whether you like this shit or not, that's what's going to happen. But... Alchemy is the basis 
in the arcane secret of the mystery system, the study of melanin. So alchemy, uh, alchemy, uh, derived in the Middle Ages, well, for white people, given to them by the Moors, producing a philosopher's stone. The philosopher's stone is melanin, but it is also the pineal gland. The philosopher's stone, which could turn base metal into gold and prolong in life. Alchemy symbolizes illumination, salvation, putrefaction, and immortality. So this is putrefaction. This is a putre, when something putrefies, it ferments. So this is al alchemy. So don't stay away from the juice. Being good, pious motherfuckers, get down with the shit. Because we ain't talking religion. Religion don't do nothing for you. You the most religion. Good things happen to bad people all the time. And bad things happen to good people all the time. Moralism has nothing to do with spirituality. If this is an illusion and it doesn't exist, what the fuck does anybody give a damn about your behavior? That's what the white man knows. That's why the white man does what the fuck he gonna do. And you the stupid motherfucker. That ain't right. You just don't know the laws of the universe. The laws of the universe is survival of the fittest. You don't think so? Look at goddamn nature. Oh, I'm one with nature. Oh, I'm a black person. I'm one with nature. You ever seen the animal kingdom? The bigger bug bites off the head of the smaller bug. You ever see the lions and shit? Motherfuckers just be eating all kind of shit. I be feeling sorry for the damn, here go a motherfucking dog on antelope or whatever with a damn lion damn paw in the side of his gut. You see, oh, I'm one with fucking nature. Well, goddamn, you one with goddamn nature. Nature is survival of the fittest. Natural selection. I'm one with nature. Well, goddamn it, wait till that goddamn hurricane come. Talk that dumb shit, and you can be the best grandmama sitting on the porch with your Bible. That hurricane will split your ass in two. <laughs> this shit ain't got nothing to do with no fucking moralism. <coughs> nothing to do with moralism. If you say, I'm, oh, I'm just one with nature. You know, we got this old Afrocentric bullshit. It's a bunch of nothing but some goddamn, uh, some, 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 the Afrocentric shit was nothing but some, um, um, redone Christianity. That's why when I started talking about the sex stuff, motherfuckers lost their mind. All the so-called Kimmy and all the Kimmy and the brothers and all that old bullshit. <laughs> we see how far it's, that was nothing. We just took, we took the same model of Christianity and righteousness and piety and just put Egyptian on that shit. And the sacred, divine, blessed, and all that old bullshit these niggas talking about. <laughs> That's what the white man knows. Say, these motherfuckers ain't got the shit yet. Down here, this is hell. Right. Right. And whoever rules is a motherfucker figure out reality is what you can get away with. Okay. One man's God is another man's devil. And that's what this shit is about. So get your freak on. That's what this Elliot was telling your ass. You up to be all nice and divine. Your mind is telling you, I want to get my freak on. And society is telling you, Oh, no, you can't do that. You know, that's what white black people say when white motherfuckers go kill somebody up and go come in there and, 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 and go in your community, drop some chemtrails and kill up black people. They can't do that. You ever hear niggas say that shit? You know what I'm saying? They come up in there and arrest your child, stick a pole up his ass in the damn jail. They can't do that. Are you a fucking fool? Because we taking our mind and thinking our mind is the same as the fucking white people's mind. You know what I'm saying? They do what the fuck they want to do. And that's the way this shit go down here. 